Well, you guys have probably seen or heard by now that Steve and I had a, uh, a little PC tech support challenge face-off hosted by Linus Tech Tips. I learned some things about that. I have some suggestions maybe for Linus on how they can make the competition maybe a little bit more interesting uh, moving forward, maybe bringing some things down even to a more photo finish. And given the fact that we were the first contestants, I think I have some solid feedback for him to maybe make it even more entertaining than it already was. So. There's probably gonna be some spoilers in this. I'm sorry if you guys haven't gone and watched it, but enough time has gone by till I think we're past that statute of, hey, it's not fair to talk about it because people asked to see our feed. We weren't actually recording. We just were sending the feed to Linus. So Steve already put up a full, his full end of the live stream. I'm gonna tell you guys today what I was doing, what I was saying, what I found, and again, some of my suggestions for making it better. And by better, I mean more entertaining, not just like, no sore loser. I'm not, I'm not a sore loser. I'm not. The Define 7 Compact from Fractal Design takes the strongest features from the popular Define 7 and incorporates them in an all new compact and convenient frame. The open layout provides plenty of space for your favorite cooling solutions without taking up valuable desk space, and the tempered glass side panel and interchangeable top allow the Define 7 Compact to be customized to your specific needs. To see the full list of enhancements and capabilities of the all new Define 7 Compact from Fractal Design, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So this is the system that was sent to us. There were essentially three identical systems. Linus kept one, Steve had one, I had one. And it's funny, they all had, they all were different colors. So I always knew who had whose. Like if you see the, if you see the picture for the giveaway, cause they are giving away these systems. Um, the gold one is obviously the one that we had. So here was the premise. All, well I say all three, the two systems we were sent ha were identical. Identical parts, identical cases, identical everything. And I think that they might've even been images of each other in terms of the OS installs and all that stuff. And there was, a, there was a laundry list of things that were wrong with the system. And the name of the game was to find, fix, and benchmark the systems. So I took a very conventional approach of doing a visual once over on the system and seeing what I could find that was wrong. Now the system was not shipped with the graphics card in it. And that was for shipping purposes because the graphics card is just sort of floating there, being hanged on by the you know, PCI Express brackets here and then the motherboard taking most of the weight. They don't want the dam damage to happen to the PCI slot or the graphics card. It's the way a lot of system uh, builders will send the graphics card in a separate box. So that box is right here. And this will explain some stuff too, because there was a lot of, why is Jay constantly doing heaven? He ran heaven. Why is he still doing heaven? Well, you can see it says right on the box, use this GPU first. And that kind of got in my head a little bit. Because my thoughts were, and they sent spare parts. They sent a spare, C, they sent a spare CPU, a spare motherboard, spare graphics cards, spare SSD, um, no spare power supply though. And my thought was like, okay, this is so not the same as troubleshooting someone, some friend of yours, it's like my computer won't boot. They bring you the box and you know the problem is contained in that box. But you, it gets in your head in this competition because, and again, all you armchair quarterbacks, yeah, it's really easy to sit there and be like, yeah, why aren't they figuring this out when the host is talking about the problems and you guys are being told the answers. Armchair quarterbacks are always the best, aren't they? Anyway, moving forward. You don't know if the problem is in the box or that box with the spare parts. It's like, wait, why are they giving me a spare motherboard? Why are they giving me a spare, anything could be wrong. And that's the thing, we didn't know what was wrong. So this got in my head of thinking they tampered with the graphics card in some way. So my first inclination was get the system booted, get it to the BIOS, get it into the OS and test the graphics card. Cause I thought the most likely thing they may have done is remove thermal paste from the graphics card. What was wrong with the system in terms of what the way it was shipped was one, all the power plugs were undone. Obviously the PCI Express cords were undone because there was no graphics card in there. Eight pin EPS up here was undone. So this particular motherboard comes with the little easy adapter deal. So instead of trying to put all the front panel connectors onto the motherboard, you put them onto this thing and then this plugs into the motherboard. Well, they were wrong on here. At least the power switch was wrong. Um, figured that out pretty quickly by having everything powered up, pushing the power button and having nothing happen, but then pushing the start button on the motherboard booted the system. So I knew right away the button was wrong. Um, the memory was in single channel. So they had both sticks of memory on the furthest left slots. And if you guys aren't, if you guys aren't familiar with motherboard memory layouts, nine times out of 10, and maybe even more frequently than that, <clears throat> the very far right stick uh, would be occupied or dim would be occupied with a space and then the next stick. And that would get you basically channel A and channel B. If we had four sticks of RAM, then you would just put all four in there and you don't have to worry about it. 
So it, was, it would have been forcing itself to single channel mode. In fact, that's the very first thing I did was I pulled out the memory and I set it aside because I wanted to check everything else out. Um, other things that were wrong is on the air cooler here, one of the fans wasn't plugged in at all. Um, the rear fan wasn't plugged in at all. There were three PCI Express power plugs in the system. One was like, and then you had to, they had them basically routed like this coming through this hole. So you knew like, okay, those are for the, the power supply or for the graphics card. But they had a third power uh, PCI Express plug that was plugged in and kind of stuffed under everything so you couldn't see it. And one of these weren't plugged in. So that was pretty obvious right away because Asus motherboards can detect when the graphics card isn't getting PCI Express power. And the BIOS basically told me immediately, plug in PCI Express power. So I was like, okay, that's a quick, easy one because, and I looked down and then I saw the end of the plug. I was like, all right. Things I didn't catch physically though. I'm looking right at this thing. And this is one that like literally, I was kicking myself first days after actually. This event went down Saturday, Sunday and Monday. I still woke up going, why didn't I clear the CMOS? Why didn't I turn around the fans? I'll talk about the clear CMOS in a second, but the fans are pretty obviously blowing that way. These fans are different and they're blowing this way. Something else that I did not catch though, is that there is no thermal paste under this cooler. Steve caught that really quickly. And again, I haven't watched the stream. I don't plan on watching the stream. I like the fact that I had no idea that there were 60,000 live viewers that I had no idea what he was doing. I don't want to know what he was doing while I was doing such and such because I don't want to know how far behind I actually was. Steve took the approach of rip it all out of the case, bench test it, and put it back in. Now that's not the way I troubleshoot because I, I took this troubleshooting challenge, PC tech challenge very literal in that our job was to find everything that was wrong. Like, like the compare the two photos, there's 10 things wrong with this photo, find them and circle them. That's the approach I took to this. If this was the PC rebuild challenge, then I feel the method Steve went would have been the right way. Now this isn't salt, this isn't, this, this isn't some sort of um, you know, aggression or whatever towards Steve. He said that method works for him. It's just the way he's comfortable working. He doesn't like working in a case anymore. And I'm very comfortable with working in a case. But I definitely looked at this as this was customer support. A PC was sent to us, customer screwed with it, screwed it all up, and now we're fixing it. And that's the way I was used to working in tech support when I used to work in IT. So I took the approach I was very used to. Now, once we got it to boot into BIOS, I couldn't find an OS. And the thing that was really screwing with me is in the spare parts box was a spare NVMe that was still wrapped. And I went, there's only an Enforce two and a half inch SSD on the back right here. Right there, <laughs> I was pointing about <laughs> it, right there. It's not booting to that. We teach and we've taught, I don't even know how many times on this channel, when your computer is acting weird, clear CMOS, and this motherboard makes it really easy. There's a button to do it that will fix most of your problems right away. And I didn't do that because I knew that there were benchmarks involved. I didn't know if there was an overclock associated with this. I hadn't personally used a 10700K before. In my mind, I didn't know what the numbers should be. So Linus had given us the numbers for the target that we had to match. And basically what that means is if we got close to his numbers or you know, in the margin of error range, so circle around that number that we would land in, then I knew things were running properly. But I didn't know if those numbers included any sort of overclocks. Because I figured Steve and I's past with the overclocking competition would have been like, hey, let's throw a wrench in there and let's put an overclock in here they've got to match. And if they did these systems you know, identically, they should target pretty close to each other. My biggest mistake was the amount of time I spent trying to get the OS to boot. And that's because my very first thought, maybe there's an M.2 in here that's not connected properly. This bottom cover right here was loose. I even said out loud, you guys couldn't hear it unless they were in our room listening to the audio. I said, these screws are loose and I took the cover off and I'll do it again. These two things I just mentioned, the not clearing of the CMOS and the not noticing this very sneaky thing. And here's the, here's the thing, a customer would never send a computer to us that way if we were fixing it because no one's as dumb to do what this was, but this was designed to fool us and it worked for me anyway. And I think it got Steve for like a minute. So I loosened up the cover and I went, nope, there's no drive in there. And I put it right back and I never looked down at it. 
stuck to its thermal paste. And Phil believes that the reason why it wasn't tightened down is because it wouldn't have fit in there right because of the little post. It could have potentially damaged it. So they just snugged it on there enough so that it wouldn't hurt it. So I then took the time to take off the next big cover to see if there was an M.2 under there, and there wasn't. So then I went, how sneaky is Linus? Maybe the M.2 that's in the spares is the one we need, and he re-shrink wrapped it. And he seemed to know a lot about shrink wrapping, actually, when he came into the audio and talked about it afterwards. He's like, oh yeah, it's real easy to re-shrink wrap it. All you need is a heat gun. <laughs> and there was no OS, no OS on that. So then I realized in the BIOS, it was set to legacy mode. M.2 devices were not even being seen because you need obviously the UEFI BIOS for the M.2 devices to show. Now I should have caught this because he came in earlier when I was like, I can't find an OS. And he specifically said, there is an OS installed on one of the drives in the system. He said one of the drives in the system. And I heard that and it was like the little like Metal Gear Solid like drink, like, but there's only one in there. <laughs> he came back like 20 minutes later. He's like, are you sure you checked? And of course, production, the production team has a list of everything that's wrong. They know. So they lifelined and they were like, you might want to look a little closer. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Shut up, shut up. Before he even took it off, he's like, did you figure? I'm like, shut up, get out of my channel. And I was like yelling at Linus, like, get out of here. And then there it was. And in fact, I did see on Twitter the amount of comments that were like, Jay's face when he saw the drive stuck to the, ther the thermal pad is priceless. I haven't seen it. No one screen capped it and sent it to me. I don't want to see it because I'm sure it was something like, but internally it was like Argh! So anyway, we're booted, we're finally into the OS. My thought is I need to get this thermal, this thermal pound or compound checked on this graphics card because I am positive they did something to it. In fact, I, you can even see in the stream, I'm holding up looking at the light to see if I can see light or something in between there. I noticed the icon on the desktop for Metro Exodus. And one of the things is we have to launch Metro Exodus from the link. Now having worked in IT, at, for a for a enterprise type of solution, not IT for like oh, a jewelry store that's got four computers and I'm the guy that no we're talking we're talking hundreds of end users within our organization across many campuses with VPNs and all sorts of stuff. I was very used to people going in and messing with things they shouldn't have and completely destroying their drive mapping. So when I saw the icon that was like the white piece of paper with the black link, I knew immediately that icon is linked to nowhere. It's a broken link. That was easy. And it shocks me that that actually hung Steve up for a while because I saw that and I was like, boom, disk management, go to the drive. It's there, it's not black, it's allocated. In fact, I had a third drive in there, which because I threw it in there, obviously I put that other drive in, remapped it, went to the link, right click properties, saw it was, it was looking for a D drive, renamed it to D drive, the thing came back up. In fact, we, I, I, I figured that all out so fast, they came in and verified, did you use the link on the desktop? And I was like, yes, because what, what could have happened and it would, not have, it would not have counted. In fact, if Steve had done this, the timer would have just kept going for him because it wouldn't have counted. If he had just gone in, give it a new drive letter and then put a new link on the desktop and clicked it that way, that wouldn't have counted because the, the goal was not to get Exodus running. It was to get it running using their link. So I figured that, out, that one out immediately. I then proceeded to run Heaven 62,000 times. Now, Linus and Austin came into the chat and were like, you seem to be spending an awful lot of time in Heaven, why? And I guess they were sort of impressed by this and, and Phil has seen this firsthand. I know every graphics card on this shelf. I know exactly what we'll overclock to. I know exactly what the score should be, what the temps should be, and what the boost targets should be. I know every single graphics card in here. People want to argue with me over graphics cards, fanboyisms, and whether or not you know I'm just team NVIDIA or team AMD or whatever. I'm team graphics card. Graphics cards are fun. They're the, they are the most fun part of your system to play with because they give you direct, like they are the most direct impact on your gaming experience. So I, how many times have I been like, oh, the 3D Mark score should be blah, 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 and I'm within 100 points. Or how, oh, our FPS should be yada, yada, and I'm within like one FPS. I know this shit. It's what I do. And we're getting ready to do it all over again next month, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, you didn't hear that from me. So when it comes to the graphics card, I was able to see immediately whether or not it was right or tampered with. And then my brain was just like, it's correct. I don't know, let's run it again. So I kept running it. Anyway, all of the other tests were CPU related. R20, R15, and then three blender tests. We knew we had to download R15 and R20, and they were very adamant, unless specified, download the benchmarks. So I had to download Blender, I had to download R20, I had to download R15. By that time, I couldn't get the internet running. This is where the clear CMOS would have saved me so much time. The ethernet was disabled. 
the wireless was disabled. Now this is where Steve gained a solid 20 minutes on me. By clearing the CMOS, he didn't have, he didn't, I, he would not be able to tell you today what all was wrong in the BIOS. Now I could, because I found him. And the problem is, and we still don't know exactly what happened here, when I re-enabled it, something was wrong with the driver. I had no driver. And I'm trying to download the driver using my laptop, and, and Linus was like, fine, use your laptop, that's fine. The drivers we were downloading, for some reason, would not unzip in any program other than WinRAR. Now, 7-Zip wouldn't do it, Windows 10 wouldn't do it. Now, we looked in Device Manager, and you could see all the Ethernet stuff had a, had a triangle on it. And I was trying to get Windows to install its basic, and it should have installed the basic Intel driver for, for LAN, because it's part of the Windows install. It's contained in there, at least a generic enough version to get you online. So for some reason, mine would not activate. So I had a real troubleshooting problem pop up in the middle of the troubleshooting challenge, which cost me easily another 20 minutes. So those are the three things that caused me truly to fall behind. The drive, I spent at least 15, 20 minutes on figuring that one out. The driver's not showing up, and then the, some of the settings in BIOS. Fast forward through getting all, all those problems, I finally got to the point to where I could run Cinebench. I ran Cinebench R15, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, is the 10700 a six core or an eight core? And I looked at the score, and it was like 1500 and something. And I saw we were supposed to have like 2200 or something like that. I had already found that they disabled two cores. So I knew it was an eight core. But I was like, does it have hyper-threading? That was my question, does it have hyper-threading? I bet you hyper-threading, I missed that in the BIOS. And I went back to the BIOS, and I enabled it, ran it, and then got the score. Now I'm sitting here looking at the score and the computer's over here. This cooler has a temp readout on the face of it. But I'm like this, because I wanted the monitor at an angle where, where Phil could, could, could film it. And then the PC's over here at an angle he could film it. So I'm in the middle like this, and I'm looking at it and I'm going, sweet, we got our R15 score, it matches. Now Phil's not allowed to communicate with me like, hey Jay, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. The, 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 he could have come over here, but I would have to tag out and then get the camera and then he would be over here working on it because you're allowed to do that with your team. And I don't think Steve tagged out at all either. He saw the temps were like really high. And I'm going, okay, that's fine, and we move forward. And then Linus and Austin pop in my chat and they're like, hey, we see that you're in uh, Cinebench. How's that going? Well, I got your score, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, well, you know the side panel has to be on for your test, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So I put the side panel back on. And I'm like, well, if the side panel's gonna go on, might as well ramp up the fans. So I put the fans back to maximum. I come back and I run the test and I'm like, yep, we're good. And they're like, really? Really, you're good? I'm like, yeah, we're good. They're like, are you sure about that? I'm like, yes. Now, when someone starts saying that, they, they gave me so much information by what they weren't saying and the way that they were saying things that even Linus was like, I didn't say that. I'm like, yes, yes you did, you did say that. I didn't catch that there was no thermal paste. Because one of the things I did in BIOS was I'm like, I don't know anything about the airflow of this case. I am removing all the limits. I, I put on all our overclocking limits. It could pull 4,000 watts from this thing if it wanted. I was like, I don't care if I blow it up. It's Linus's. He's got to put a different CPU in here or I got to use the spare one if I blow it up for the winter. When I looked over at the test and I saw, oh, that's 99 Celsius on a water cooler. That's probably not right because Linus was like, yeah, there's no thermal paste under there. By the way, Steve's already won, so let's go ahead and get you guys back in the same channel. And I'm like, stuff. Even though these tests are short, Usually, if you have no thermal paste, you will immediately throttle. Even Intel was a bit surprised, like, holy crap, there's no thermal paste on your CPU. You actually got the numbers you were supposed to get, removed all safeguards, and it didn't die. So that kind of became the story, it was like, Jay got the numbers with no thermal paste. So not only was it having no thermal paste, it wasn't having any airflow through the fans because it was just probably bouncing back out the gaps. That's where things ended. Now I'm gonna go into the suggestions part, and Linus, I'm gonna probably send you a link at this time mark, because prior to this, you don't care about any of this. I have some suggestions on the way that you could maybe modify the rules on this to make it much more interesting. Let both parties go until one of two things happen, because it's on the schedule, it was supposed to be a three hour stream, but we only went two, so I was really surprised that he called it at two hours. Let the contestants go until they complete the benchmarks. Let there be a, let there be a points. So first, we're gonna talk about points in a second, because I think this should be points based on top of goals based. Goals should have a points value associated with them. In fact, I'm gonna sit down here, because we're, we're gonna have real talk right now. <clears throat> Rather than having the competition be who can get these goals done first, completing the goals should only be worth a maximum 50% of the score. 
because knowing what's wrong with the system in my mind is what we were going in it as. Seek it out. Each problem has a point value. The obvious ones are worth less. The hidden ones, like the BIOS, are worth more. Because what you could potentially have here is maybe the person who doesn't finish first actually wins. And I don't, I'm not even talking about me. Like I had a lot of fun with this. This was, this was a, a ton of fun. And I don't really care that I came in second place because at the end, you know, we, we still gave a lot of money to charity and everybody won. But this could make for some really exciting upsets because maybe the person who came in second and maybe there's a timed, like if you can be within 30 minutes, there's no penalty. But if it took you an extra hour, maybe there's a points penalty. Where maybe the person who came in second but identified more problems could potentially win by points, not by time. So you have what appears to be this person that crossed the finish line first, and it's like, all right, Steve, what's everything that was wrong with the BIOS? Uh, I don't know. I cleared the CMOS. That was half the problems. Of the list of things wrong with the system, half of them were in the BIOS. And by clearing CMOS or doing factory defaults, you wipe out any chance of knowing what they were because the second you do that, they're gone. And you wouldn't be able to answer that. So potentially, you could have a person who finished second actually win because if the competition is about identifying things that are incorrect, I think that that would make things a lot more interesting. So let's say for instance, you've got a total of 50 points on items that you have to identify and fix and then half the score also being the benchmarks. If you got 50%, that's a failing score in a test, right? 50% is a fail. And then you get points for every item you identify after that, you could have an up, a, a maximum of up to 100 points, but you only find five or six of the physicals and maybe they're worth five points each or two points or whatever you make them be. But the person who finished second identified everything and got through the scores, that person could win. So I think that you should maybe consider a rubric for this, some sort of scale or points value to all of it. I don't personally believe it should simply be the person that can get to the, those four goals first, because as you could see, the rebuild method, in my opinion, I don't think was towards the nature of the competition and what it was like, the spirit of the competition, what it was supposed to be. I truly took it as identify all the problems. So that would be my suggestion. What do you guys think? Do you guys think there should be every item has a value to it and the person who gets the most points at the end wins? And obviously, if you don't get through the benchmarks, you're not gonna win because if that could be 50, like you have to complete all four maybe that would be the goal. Like that's 50% of it right there. So if you don't complete it in the time, like there has to be a max time, then at that point you don't win because you didn't achieve the goals. At the end of the day, it was a ton of fun. I had, I had a lot of fun. I would definitely participate in this again, especially as a host, because I think, I, I think it would be fun to see the stress on everyone's face when this is happening. Um, there's been a lot of suggestions, maybe getting Paul against Kyle. And the sh talking there has already started, which is hilarious. The comments are extremely positive on how entertaining this was. And again, 60,000 live viewers, that's pretty significant. So I know this video might've been a little bit longer, but I learned a lot about this. Once I went in there and saw there was no overclock, I should have cleared it, especially knowing now that it didn't matter on what you identified. But I also am kicking myself because there are things that I should have done that I, that I preach that I didn't practice. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed um, the live stream if you watched it. I hope you learned something with this today. I've got to go through here and rebuild this system. I'm gonna cable management. I'm gonna make it, make it pretty. I don't want to hand them whoever built this. Put some thermal paste in there maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna be honest. I'm impressed with the fact that Steve tore everything out, benchmarked it on the bench to be fair, then put it all back in and had to benchmark it all again because they were like, hey Steve, it has to be in the case. Steve definitely is tech Jesus in that aspect because it freaking took a miracle. <laughs> <laughs>